Before we start this video, a large thank you to Kirsten McCulak and Leon Kennedy for their support to this channel on Patreon. And a special thank you to Kyle Davies for their immense support to this channel. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Alright guys, today we're actually going to make our shield block some damage. And to do that, we're going to have to do a couple things with our character. First, we're going to have to add a blocking collider. And that is basically a giant box collider that will detect any incoming attack and apply some damage absorption accordingly if it is enabled. So I'm going to create a new empty game object right here. I'm going to call this... Uh, I'm going to put it here under the combat colliders. I'm just going to call it blocking collider. Now you guys may notice the screen flash white. That's actually because of the HDR settings on my monitor. Figured it out later, so hopefully I got it fixed for now. Now I'm going to add a box collider uh, to this. I'm going to make it a trigger. And I'm just going to basically put the view here in isometric mode. And I'm going to get a nice clean angle on a player. And what you want to do is basically make it so the head is exposed uh, and the feet and the body are covered. This is just so if you're using a bow um, or a crossbow, you can still kind of pick the player off past the shield. If you're not into that, you can make the shield cover the whole entirety of the player. Um, this is very similar to how Souls handles it. And the reason why we're using, we're using one um, collider and not several across different weapons is because basically um, you don't want smaller shields to not block uh, attacks half the time. That would just be frustrating and just bad for gameplay. So I've got mine made about this size. I'm very, uh, very much so a fan of how much space this covers, and I find it works very well. Now I'm going to tick, like I said before, the is trigger box, and we're going to add a new script to it. We're going to call it Blocking Collider, and man, it is so nice to be back on my computer. Thank you guys for being ever so patient, by the way. I appreciate it. It's a lot more of a smoother process now. So let's start off with our namespace, as is per tradition. I'm going to say namespace SG, open these curly brazers, and erase the start and update function. So we're going to do a few things in the script. Um, first of all, we're going to have to actually call our box collider variable um, and we're gonna have to just call that an awake because we're going to enable and disable the shield via the box collider because that's where all the magic is going to be happening so I'm just going to call that blocking collider that is the same name of the script uh, so if you find that confusing just call it uh, box collider or just collider and then I'm going to make a public float called blocking physical damage absorption and this will basically be a percentage um, of how much your shield is going to absorb with the formula we used to, to calculate it. So 99 equals 99% of damage absorbed, 100 is 100%, 50 is 50%. And then we're going to make an awake method, and we're going to say blocking collider equals get component box collider. All right, now we're going to have to edit a few scripts uh, to link all this together. But before we move on, let's make a public void set collider damage absorption. And we need to pass along a weapon item, basically whatever weapon is blocking, uh, we're going to give our collider the damage absorption values based on how much damage this weapon can absorb. And we're going to say if weapon does not equal null, we're going to say blocking physical damage absorption equals weapon dot. And now we actually have to make a new variable on our weapon class. So let's go over to that. So let's go right click on weapon item, go to definition. And now you're going to see we have a header for damage and we got our base damage and our critical damage modifier or multiplier. Let's make a header for absorption. And this will be handled or this will... Uh, handle all blocking absorptions and values rather. So right now, public int, um, actually I'm gonna make that a float. Yeah, definitely a float just in case in the future you wanna add like point values. Uh, we're gonna say public float, and then we'll say, mm, we'll call it physical damage absorption. If you guys wanna start adding fire damage and dark damage, that's all cool too. I'm gonna wait until later. Uh, you can just add those in the shield and you know modify the calculations appropriately. We're going to say equals weapon dot physical damage absorption. And that is basically all there is to it as far as to setting the damage absorption of the shield. Now we're going to make a public void enable and disable blocking collider. This will be the function called to basically turn the shield on and off because you only want this collider to be active while you're actually blocking. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, the effect of blocking attacks when your shield is not up. So. Let's say enable blocking collider, and then we're going to say blocking collider, referencing the box collider itself, dot enabled equals true. And here on disabled blocking collider, we're just going to copy and paste that, but set it to false. Now we're actually going to call these functions from another script, uh, not from this one itself. So let's go to on trigger enter now on the damage collider, and now let's modify how our damage is calculated. First, let's add a new variable for uh, of blocking of type blocking collider rather. We'll call it shield. And we're going to say equals collision.transform.getComponent in children. So it's going to search the player for an active blocking collider or a shield. And if there is an active shield, we want to do something about that. 
So the parrying is always first in the chain. So let's keep that right on top. If the character is parrying, we're going to process that. And then we're going to check for the shield right afterwards. So right below that, let's just say else if, after if enemy character manager dot is parrying, we'll say else if enemy character manager dot is blocking. It appears I don't have the is blocking because I think I put it on the player manager instead. Yes, I did. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the combat flags here. We're going to say public bull is blocking and we're going to remove it from the player manager and we'll still be able to use it in the player manager because the player manager derives from this class. So let's pop up a player manager real quick and let's we'll delete is blocking and nothing will change because we're just calling it or we're taking it rather from the character manager. So now we can say else if enemy character manager is blocking and we actually want to check also if the shield uh, is not null. So I'm just going to copy this. First I'm going to say shield does not equal null and I'll just put the and and here and we'll throw this and paste this right here like this. There we go. And now inside here we're going to do some logic. We're basically going to say float physical damage after block is equal to and then we're going to say our current weapon damage minus and open up some brackets here. Current weapon damage times shield dot physical damage absorption and then close brackets divided by 100. And all that means essentially is um, the shield is going to block a percentage of your total damage based on how much physical damage percentage it absorbs. So if your physical uh, damage absorption is 98, you're going to block 98% of the damage. If it's 50, you're going to block 50% of the current weapon damage. And then we're going to say if player stats is not equal to null, we're going to apply the damage after the setup. So we'll say player stats dot take damage, um, and then we're going to say physical damage after block. Oh, we're going to see that it says this is a float and we need to be an int. Well, that's okay. We can just actually use a math f here. So we're going to say math f dot round to int, and then we'll open up two brackets and pass our physical damage after block, and there we go. But we need to actually play a proper animation when we're taking damage. Don't want to play the take damage animation when you're blocking an attack. We want to play the block animation. So let's change this uh, function a bit. We're going to put a comma here, and then we're going to say string. And what we're going to do is we're going to just make it so uh, it's equal to a damage 01. But we can change it. Whoops, I forgot to name the variable itself. So we're going to say string, and then I'm going to say damage animation. And then I'm going to say is equal to damage 01. So if you don't set this, it will be defaultly set to damage 01, uh, similar to what we did in the animator manager. But you can choose to set it. So down here, we're going to say animator handle dot play target. And we're going to say damage animation. So whatever damage animation you choose to pass it, if you choose to pass one, we'll play it instead. So if you don't pass it one, it'll play the damage animation. If you do pass it a different animation, it will play that one instead. So then we can just say comma, and we can say block guard. And I think I put that, yeah, I just put that inside the wrong brackets. So I'm just going to copy that. It's not a part of the math F equation. There we go. And put a comma outside of here. And there we go. So now we will play the blocking animation when our shield is up. All right, let's save that. Now I'm going to go over to my animator here. And I'm going to drop in a new animation called block guard. Now this is an animation you play when you're blocking an attack. I'm just going to check foot IK here and transist it back into the empty state. I have this on the override state because it is a full bodied animation. As you can see, you're going to want to put your feet down and really dig in. And there's no movement when you're playing this animation. Okay. Then we're going to say return because we don't want to process the normal damage unit afterwards. Now let's add a script to the player model game object. We're going to call this player equipment manager. And this is going to handle um, our equipment in the future, like weapon buffs, uh, blocking, and some other things. So let's say namespace up here, SG, as is per tradition. I'm going to delete the start and update functionalities here. And the first thing we're going to want to call in this script and reference to is our blocking collider. So we're going to say blocking collider, blocking collider. And then we're going to say awake. And we're going to say blocking collider is equal to get component in children blocking collider. Then we'll say public void open blocking collider. And then we're going to make a public void close blocking collider. Now, this is cool because we're going to call this now. We're going to say blocking collider. And then we're going to say set collider damage absorption. And we're going to pass our 
weapon, which we don't do yet because we haven't called our inventory, but we will. And then we're going to enable our blocking collider. So basically we're going to set the damage absorption and then we're going to enable it every time you open it. And then we're going to say public void disable or close blocking collider and we're just going to disable it. So since this is on the player model, um, we can do a lot of cool things. We can actually use animation events if you want. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself now. So first let's call the player inventory up here. Say player inventory, and then we're gonna call it on awake, and we're gonna say player inventory equals get component in parent, because it does sit on the game object above this one in the hierarchy, and then we're gonna to need to do something depending on if we're uh, what weapon we're using. So normally we'll say blocking clutter dot set damage clutter absorption player inventory left weapon because you're blocking with your off hand. However, if you are two handing, then you're two handing your right weapon and that weapon does become the weapon you block with. So we'll need to call our input handler so we can get our two hand flag. So let's just call that on awake as well, because basically we have it set up so we can two hand our right handed weapon whenever we tap the Y button. And if we're two handing our right handed weapon, that becomes the weapon we block with also. So then we're gonna say if input handler, oops, if input handler dot two hand flag well, that means we're going to be blocking with our right weapon. If we're not two-handed, we're going to be blocking with our left weapon. So we'll just move that in there like so. We'll paste it up here too. We'll say set collider damage absorption player inventory dot right weapon instead. Now, I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's save that. We're looking pretty good here. Okay, let's go up here on the player attacker script. And we're going to call our player equipment manager, just wherever. And we're going to call that awake. And because it sits on the same game object as this uh, script, we're going to say get component. And now when we actually um, call our LB action, which leads to our blocking action, we're going to open up the actual blocking collider. So down here where it says perform LB block action. Right after we start the animation, we're going to say, we're going to say player equipment manager dot open blocking collider. There we go, and that looks good. Now let's save that. Now, let's come back over here on the input handler, and we're gonna say blocking collider, and we're gonna call that on awake, and we're gonna say get component in children. Now, I'm gonna show you another way to do this if you're not a fan of this way, uh, because it's perfectly fine if you wanna do it a different way. I'm gonna come down here on the LB input, and if we disable our LB input, I'm gonna say if blocking collider dot blocking collider, which is referencing the boss collider, dot is enabled, make this public first, then I'm going to basically disable it. Um, so if you let go of LB and the action's false, it's going to check and see if your blocking collider is enabled, and then it's going to disable it. But if you'd prefer to do it a different way, what you can do is you can actually, since we're using the, um, the player equipment manager on the game object of the player model, you can make an animation event and you can call the disable blocking collider on an animation event, the animation that your player goes from when he stops blocking. So after block end, where it goes from block end to empty, you can just put an animation event on this animation and call that function then if you prefer. Uh, both ways are fine, they both work out just right. Now if you go into game, you'll see I actually have an error and I just figured out why. So as you can see here, um, I've made it public. Our blocking collider variable is not being found on our player equipment manager and this is because it's not actually in um, the children component of this game object is actually in a separate game object and in the children of that one. So we can move the combat clutters under the player model or we can just make a public and we can drag it in, which I'm going to do. So let's just take the blocking collider variable here or uh, the box clutter, sorry, and drag it on the variable. And now when we start the game, we should be good to go. Now let's go to the shield and I'm going to edit the value here of the physical damage absorption and I'm going to change it to 99. Now I'm gonna run over to the enemy here and raise my shield. And as you can see, I'm blocking 99% of the damage he will be doing to me. Okay, now let's edit it just so you know that this works. I'm going to go out of the game here and we'll change the value on the shield. So let's click on it and I'll change the value to something like, uh, like 50. So now you'll see that I will lose a large chunk of health compared to what I was just losing that time. So let's lock onto this guy. Raise the shield, and there we go. We're taking some damage now. And as you can see, it's a lot of damage compared to what I was just taking. 
Okay, so now you guys have a fully functioning blocking system. A lot of aspects of combat are now done. You can repost, you can parry, you got a block on the go, you can backstab people. Oh, I'm dead. So, uh, we're not completely done yet though, because we only have that done for the player, but it's very simple and very straightforward. We just copy everything up here and paste it right below for the enemy. So all you gotta do is copy this else if statement, and then you put it right below the if statement here, because it is identical to the player. This is just when we hit an enemy instead of a player. And then we take the shield variable, and we put it right below the character manager variable right here. And then we change um, player stats to enemy stats. And then you have blocking for both your enemies and your players should you choose to use it. Now you're also going to want to make a blocking collider for your enemy just like we made for our player. Everything is basically identical. And now lastly we're also going to go to this take damage function on our enemy stats. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did to our player's take damage function on player stats which is just say... Uh, damage animation is equal to damage 01, and then we'll change this to um, play damage animation. So if you change the damage animation on the enemy, um, it will change here. If you leave it to default, it'll just play damage 01. So beyond that, guys, the video is done. You have a fully functioning blocking system, which we will expand on a little bit more in the future, add some other cool little things like reflection and stuff like that and deflection of weapons. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like, leave a comment. It helps appease the YouTube algorithm gods, helps other people see my content. And if you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. This one was really fun to make, and I gotta say I'm very, very happy and pleased with how far the combat has come in this game. We're gonna go back to AI real soon and start hammering away at that, and we're gonna make a, uh, a few adjustments to the way we do our AI combos and make it more modular. So, I will see you guys in the next video, which should be tomorrow.